Very well, welcome to another tutorial. Today we are going to cover the PC ground station. We already covered the um, iOS ground station in one of the earlier videos. There are some uh, advantages and disadvantages to both. For example, you can do photogrammetry uh, stuff with the PC ground station, but the, the GUI is much more complicated to operate. And um, obviously the PC ground station does have a USB connector, so you won't need to connect via the Bluetooth. Um, advantages on the um, iPad ground station are that the GUI interface is much more easy to operate, but there are less functions or functions are just missing at the moment. So I split the video into two parts. Uh, first part, I'm going to explain how to handle the PC ground station, how to transmit the data, and then how to, to start the stuff. Um, we also have tested this on the DJI Phantom 2 and on an S800 in real life. So I'll, I'll put in the second parts the video in, so you can see this is clearly working. So let's do a quick introduction to the ground station. We have started that up now. So what we do see here in the, in the joystick menu is just that you can calibrate the joystick if you have um, something like that attached. If you go on further, um, there's the click to mode. So this means um, when you just want to, to to bring the aircraft up, you can use that one. Um, what else do we have? We do have um, F channel controller. Um, we do have um, relative coordinates editor. I won't go into that. The root template, which is quite useful if you want to do a circle or rectangle or a triangle, so it, it overlays um, the area already. So you don't need to click 10 times for points. Um, something which is um, in particular relevant um, is the GP servo action config. So if you do have um, like a camera triggered by a servo, you can uh, definitely uh, configure that here. And another very impressive tool is here, the photogrammetry tool. And this is, um, basically for for finding all the right stuff um, or inputting the right stuff such as focal length the the, the sensor millimeters um, sensor width for example for doing a proper overlay um, if you want to do 3d reconstruction or flying over a field and record um, record stuff right um, if you go to um, system set there are um, obviously the stuff like sound, um, the instrument board style, and some more things to configure in the, in the user interface. Language, very simple, Chinese or English, that's it. And if you go to help, um, you'll just open the DGI um, website. Then what we see here is already the map. Um, and we do have the possibilities to um, Change the map um, in terms of getting newer pictures. For example, this um, is the map where my apartment where I'm living was still on the construction. So that's back in, I would say, 2008 or something like that. But we want to stay with the most, um, most recent stuff. So we click here. Let's see if this goes right. So the, the apartment was finished. And this is basically the position you can see where the aircraft is staying, in that case, the Phantom 2. So what we do now is obviously we connect um, the ground station to the PC on the USB port. Let me see if I find the right turn here. Right. And then it is recognized and you also see uh, the light. So what we're going to do first is obviously uh, connect um, the 2.4G 2.4G data link to the Phantom. And this is um, done either by, via the iOS D Mini that you can see here. Um, it has a free CAN port so we could just plug it in there um, 
If you don't have an iOS DB in, you just need to look for another port. Um, what I did afterwards in the real life test is just taped it to one of the legs, um, like this here. But that shall do it for the moment. Eh? And we're going to uh, obviously power on the Phantom. And put that aside for a second. So what we're going to do now is just um, choosing the right COM port and you'll have the COM port available as soon as the PC has recognized that the ground station is connected and you're using the right drivers. So as I said before, this is a little bit of a problem with Windows 8, but Windows 7 works fine. So what we do now is connect and you see that um, the ground station has connected to the DJI Phantom. What we also see is that the GPS is weak. Um, that's quite clear because we are um, in, a, in a closed room at the moment. So what we're going to um, search now is our home point. And there it is. That's the place where I'm living. We zoom in and there we see the whole stuff. When you click on instrument board, um, you see um, the whole behavior. So if it's tilting, if it's rolling, you see the, the, the meters always relative to the ground. And what we're going to do now is just quickly program, just quickly program a, a pattern for flying. And this is done while opening the editor. So we want to do a new mission. And what we can do now is clicking on editing the mission, then with a plus obviously it gives us the opportunity to set a point, then clicking another plus, then another point, and so forth and so on. So what you see now is um, in yellow the distance between the different points, and what you see in blue is the height uh, above the, the, the relative attitude, which means that, that the height of my apartment at this point in time. So when you're flying outside, it's obviously that the, the relative height is always taken from the ground. Now, if we're going to um, edit the waypoint parameters, and I'm strongly encouraging you to do that, um, first of all, you want to set the um, altitude much higher, um, probably around 20 meters. You want to set the, the forward flight speed probably a little bit lower. Instead of four, which is default, you want to set it to uh, probably one or two. And then the heading degree, and this is very important for all the guys that are doing, um, that are doing videos. Um, if, we, if you fly around, for example, a point of interest, you want to have the heading always into the direction of your point of interest. So you would need to modify that. Then, if you're looking at hold time, this is basically the time um, the Phantom stays at the position once it reached the, the, the waypoint. You could do that pretty much with all the waypoints, so I think the limitation is uh, 15 waypoints for the, the Phantom 2. Um, um, obviously, uh, counting the zero in, that would be 16 uh, waypoints. And then, once we click Upload, so then what we're going to see, um, once we press the upload, is obviously um, the coordinates, the waypoints. And what you see now is that the altitude um, is, is 3 meters. That's because it takes, we, we didn't change the altitude and it takes just the reference from where uh, it's supposed to start now. So um, we're not going to start it inside here. Um, I'm going to show you how it works. Um, outside of this building and what we also see is any error message that might appear. So in this case it says um, GPS opt is not, not ready and that's because it has very bad GPS signal. However, um, if we do this we can see here that the upload succeeded and then we would be ready to go. Eh? We don't do that now. We also didn't test um, like starting from the ground um, what we did, um, and you'll see that afterwards, is just bring the Phantom into um, 
I would say, if, uh, say a safe height, then press go and then it flies the way it points automatically. So I would say that would conclude the first part and let's go to the, to the second part. Number one. Geil! <laughs> <laughs> 